Hi, just to let you know a couple of shows here that I've uploaded and put together from the archive. A few people have written in and asked me to do this. One is called The Community Revolutionaries and the other one is called Revelation versus Revolution. You can actually find those in the Spreaker archive, but I've put them together here. Every Sunday show we do goes out live and is on the Spreaker archive straight after. Our Spreaker archive goes back years. It's on the live shows page at winnersontheworld.net. None of the shows are time sensitive, so they're still very important. I often go back in there for research myself because we put out so much information. But these shows are for people who actually want to tackle the global to local infiltration and get into their local councils and do something about it. Obviously, I've been talking about this for a long time, but the information here is very useful. You will learn how to deal with local change agents, how things are infiltrated, and more importantly, how you can counter that. So I hope you enjoy these. Do subscribe to us on Spreaker and Odyssey News Show every Sunday, 8 p.m., windowsontheworld.net at, yes, 8 p.m. GMT. Welcome to Windows on the World and I've got a great show for you tonight and it's going to be full of information. It's actually covering ground that we've covered in the past and going back into our archive and the reason I'm doing this is because nobody else out there covers this material which is both puzzling and quite infuriating. So we are the only outlet which discusses this and you have to ask yourself why. We're going to be talking about community revolutionaries. We're going to be talking about change agents. Yes, we've got a lot to get through in this show. The community template revolution. It's basically a bit of a delve into the back catalogue on this show and stuff we've covered before. And we've put a lot of different strands together. This is such an important subject. And if people do not understand this subject they will not be able to move forward locally. And remember, it's global to local. The only thing that matters are those people in your local town hall. Yes, we're back to basics again. But the basics of this are very simple. But as we said, not talked about. But yes, we've got shocking revelations about agenda-pushing infiltrators in every corner of Britain and, of course, the world. And... I became a victim of this quite a few times. It was talked about in a show from 2010. And if you look up the depopulation plan at windowsontheworld.net, we had a guest on there who talked about these radicals using Saul Alinsky rules, all trained by agencies and part of a government rollout of community organisers from 2010 onwards. And when... My friend's small venue and charity was attacked by these Marxist revolutionaries and change agents. They stop at nothing, including death threats, destruction of property and burglary. Those are just some of the crimes that were committed. If you want to see what can happen to people who are independent, but outside the accepted horde narrative of the new communitarian system, Take a look at small charities and venues under attack at windowsontheworld.net. Yes, it happened to me and some others regarding a community building owned by a trust. Of course, the idea was to take over this building for their fake community, which didn't exist. In this case, it actually didn't work because the people that they were trying to get to start a revolution, yes, a real one, didn't actually fall for it. But the building was taken over. We had to go to the High Court. There were people paid to issue death threats, to put leaflets through every door in Tottenham, telling them that the trustees of this small charity and the chair of the charity had actually embezzled the funds, which was a flat-out lie. But those two change agents were from Cambridge University, and Cambridge and Oxford University in the UK are the training places for the upper echelons of these useful idiots, these change agents. Well, all that happened around 2016, 2017, and we started writing about this 
<laughs> this was before my encounter with the most radical form of Saul Alinsky rules. Um, I started writing about it from about 2010 onwards, but I produced a document which actually kept getting updated and it was put out around 2014 on the present website, windowsontheworld.net, and it's called Big Society Change Agents. Nothing in the template that these people use has changed. So we also had an article called Empower Your Community, and this article accompanied our revelations of the methods used against the individual for what they call the common good. It has been the subject of many shows in our archive. This article that says called Empower Your Community outlined a simple example of management, which is the overarching software of the new global system, communitarianism, done under, of course, a technocratic rollout. The hardware is the technocratic global health security system under what is in effect totalitarianism masquerading as community. That's what we're going to be talking about tonight. The communitarian community organising groups that you will be coerced into locally use very simple methods for taking over the narrative of all public opinion. Examples such as collective action. Of course, everything has to be collectivised. And of course, when we actually look at this, there's no such thing as collective rights. That's the trick. It's all imposed from above by a hierarchy, but masquerades as collective rights. All collective rights have to come from individual rights, which is something you will never hear. Citizens Action Programme, Direct Action, Community Action Group, and of course the old chestnut, Grassroots. A dead giveaway that you are being infiltrated by corporate change agents. The archive is littered with shows on this subject and you'll find so much information at Windows on the World about this but strangely not on any other UK website. Very odd that people miss this most important point. Uh, no one else will speak of it it appears. Well the change agents and their blank staring plastic smiles and irritating faces are indeed everywhere ready to pounce and call anyone outside the Borg a far-right or, of course, a denier. So, yes, the article Big Society Change Agents started with what you will see in your local area and what is really happening behind the green propaganda. If you live in any kind of urban environment, your surroundings are being re-engineered to be more cycling and pedestrian-friendly. You will see new high-density blocks of flats being built an existing council housing destroyed, which of course it was. 400,000 council houses were made way for, well, they were basically got out of the way in about 2018, I think. We did a lot of work on this, so go back in the archive. Most of that has been now put into private hands, of course, and we can see the results of that. Well, you're going to see your CCTV, the beginning of gated communities, mini Tesco's, the gym and the usual corporate coffee shops and watering holes. You'll be told that public transport links are being improved. You're being encouraged to stay in one place. All of your city will be the same, so there will be no need to travel anywhere apart from going to work and coming home. You'll be given a community hub where change agents will be monitoring and dictating public opinion for you. The main thing you will notice, first of all, is that private transport and pro property is being restricted. Now, this has gone into a much wider area over the last few years. Remember, this article was written about 2014, and it said local businesses will be priced out, and the appearance will be that they are being supported by the council. They are not. That's a very big thing that these change agent groups are against. Individual small businesses are their enemy. And this is part of, of a worldwide agenda to control population. This is from Big Society Change Agents again. The idea is to get large numbers of people into cities and have total police state control of population. This is all being done in London and in most towns and cities around the UK. I think people are catching up with that now. It is also happening rapidly in other countries. The main thing about this global action plan is it is being implemented with no choice, but with the appearance of public participation. You'll be told that your opinion counts and given surveys with leading questions, such as how more cycling how much more cycling do you want? Local businesses will be told they are being consulted. They are not. This is being implemented rapidly and the contracts will have been signed with developers already. 
The public consultation is a facade. Your community hub will be run by volunteers, inverted commas, and trained change agents who will be spokespersons for the new plans, which will be appearing in local newspapers, council leaflets and propaganda newspapers given away as community news run by community interest groups and companies. These will contain fluffy things about local artists and trivial stories, but amongst the waffle will be the plans being forced through, described as being improvements or regeneration. There will be stories promoting the new developments and the core principles of the agenda, which this article outlines. What you will not see are the views of real local people. Later in this article, you will see how the climate change agenda of CO2 and fraudulent data by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change fits in with the brainwashing. For instance, every area in the UK has its very own climate change propaganda website. Check out yours. Now, I was sent this recently, Climate Action Network. I think they've got these websites all over the country and everything has been covered Opposition groups are infiltrated and taken over as community action groups. Often the residents are encouraged to take costly court action against new proposals. The barrister or lawyer representing the opposition is in reality working for the corporate agenda. The court cases are held in private and the costs are heaped upon the opposition group, which destroys the motivation to carry on. This is what happened in Waltham Forest during the mini Holland so-called consultations and implementation without any public input whatsoever but with the illusion of what they call consensus through of course hundreds of change agents who'd moved into the borough and cycling lobby groups of course now we talked about sustrans in our show last week councillors show their support for the community and that community is not you it is usually them yes the imposition from above known as communitarianism, the Agenda 2030 policies. Well, all that was about 10 years ago, all that stuff I've read out. And not many people address this most important issue. Well, let's have a look at another change agent group now. The Democracy Collaborative is a research and change agent organisation. This is from their homepage. Building a people-powered vision for a new democratic economy run on shared prosperity and inclusion, not exploitation. We develop and advance bold bold policy frameworks like community wealth building to aid policymakers, academics, researchers and legislators in the United States and across the world. These, These templates go into every country, by the way, and they have agents in every country working to realize a more just and equitable world for all. Well, for some, it's too big to talk about. For others, it does not exist as they do not see it. And we're going to be going into that tonight. It is hidden underneath the deceptive but in fact obvious language of the network of NGOs, citizens groups and, of course, charities. So, they all feed off each other and promote the same cause under a different banner. Nobody has ever talked about it in the UK apart from this show. Why is that? Do ask yourself why that is. Because while people are distracted onto issues of no importance, their whole narrative of local engagement is being taken over. Our work on the controlled opposition and infiltration of groups has been extensive over the years. Only a few days ago, I heard someone talking about how they trained future leaders. And these are the useful idiots once talked about by the Bolsheviks. Now... I heard this just randomly at a dinner table and a friend of mine was there and he knew what was going on. We looked at each other and I said, they're everywhere. And he said, yes, they are. And I'm not in Britain at the moment. I'm in Central Eastern Europe. What's the definition of a change agent or a useful idiot? Let's have a look at the definition of a useful idiot. I think we actually know what a change agent is. It's someone who comes in and they talk about change, but they don't tell you what the change is. They are trained in Saul Alinsky rules, very belligerent, and they can be very engaging to start with. But once you cross the line with them, then the rules for radicals, Saul Alinsky, extreme Marxist rhetoric and war tactics come out, polarise the enemy, freeze it, personalise it. Basically, anyone who is seen to be a problem will be attacked by what would appear to be like a pack of hyenas. 
uh, to destabilize the person. Okay, let's have a look at a definition of a useful idiot. It's a person perceived as propagandizing for a cause, particularly a bad cause, originating from a devious, ruthless source, without fully comprehending the cause's goals, and who is cynically being used by the cause leaders. So remember, a lot of these people are indoctrinated beyond their intelligence. In fact, most of them have very little intelligence at all, but they do have cunning and they have been trained. So, this is from ChinaDaily.com and just to prove to you that it's everywhere. This is an article which I found quite interesting. For a long time, the US, UK and other Five Eyes Alliance countries have engaged in political infiltration and subversion in other countries through various means, using non-governmental organisations as a concealed tool. Yes, NGOs are the main source of infiltration. It doesn't matter whether it's Extinction Rebellion, Friends of the Earth or one of the hundreds of change agent organisations in the UK, whether it's Citizens UK, community organisers, it doesn't matter. I've been following these groups for over 10 years and some of them have actually disappeared. But what's actually happened is the infiltration is now complete. So some of these groups have actually served their purpose. So let's have an example from this ChinaDaily.com. The National Endowment for Democracy, for example, is a self-claimed NGO, but it actually takes orders from the US government and constantly relies on funds from the White House and the US Congress. Under the pretext of democracy, it has led many NGOs in the world to export American values, conduct subversion, infiltration and sabotage and incite so-called democratic movements. It is the US government's foot soldier and white glove. We have to remember this is coming from China. And of course, the whole communist model of what happens in China is part of this technocratic global communism. But it's interesting to hear other perspectives from governments around the world. It says a lot of what we do today was done covertly 25 years ago by the CIA, said Alan Weinstein, a founding member of the National Endowment for Democracy. So all of these Soros type groups, and I say Soros type groups because the Open Society funds hundreds of these, including, of course, these puppet organisations like Black Lives Matter. So this now included pretty much all of the so-called alt-media, of we have talked about extensively, who do not report on any of this. And from Extinction Rebellion and its intelligence linked founders and company directors to our article, COVID Protest Social Engineers. There's a lot on, if you look in our archive and put in Extinction Rebellion, the template is explained in those articles. You will see that it's not just about Extinction Rebellion. Extinction Rebellion is a template revolutionary fake protest group set up by government and intelligence services. And we proved all that years ago, many years ago. So yes, I'm going to read out something else now for a bit more real diversity. This is from MiddleEastMonitor.com. NGOs warn of Zionist penetration of Morocco institutes and universities. Two anti-normalisation groups in Morocco have protested against what they say is increased Zionist infiltration of the kingdom's educational institutions. The Moroccan National Action Group for Palestine and the Moroccan Observatory Against Normalisation yesterday warned in a letter sent to the National Union of Higher Education in Morocco about a number of infiltrations by the Zionist intelligence services discreetly and publicly to college campuses. Of course, college campuses are full of these NGOs and infiltration groups. They basically control the narrative everywhere. And it's interesting because if this was in the UK or the US, they wouldn't be able to call this Zionist infiltration. They would immediately have a mass protest shouting anti-Semitism and basically deplatforming them. So this is quite interesting. It says these infiltrations took place through so-called scientific and research activities that were given misleading descriptions and names by the officers and leaders of the Zionist army in several Moroccan universities. This was done with a great secrecy over their true identities, the groups added. 
The letter also called on the public to be wary and vigilant over Israel's infiltration of Morocco's education system. According to the head of the Moroccan Observatory Against Normalization, Ahmed Wayman, the Zionist infiltration of the Moroccan universities as targeting of the country's elites. Basically, that's what he described it as, infiltration of the Moroccan universities, targeting of the country's elites. Well, in the UK, the infiltration from citizens actions groups like community organisers recruit their useful idiots through their website and communitarianism engages all sides and steers them into the intended outcomes. I did an interview around 2014, which was all about the Tavistock Institute of Human Relations and the associated organisations which are very near to where Tavistock is situated. You can find that on YouTube and it's Tavistock and NGOs. You will have maybe a good chance of finding it by looking at... Uh, I'll get it. I'll get it for you. I'll get it in the break. Let's Let's move on because... I'll find it and give you the link, but it'll just give you some idea because we talked about Unlimited in there, which is a change agent group. They train future leaders. Then, of course, we have organizations such as Crown Agents. Take a look. They openly are training these people who they're calling future leaders, and now we've got them in the community. So basically, they're picking out the people who are the useful idiots to train as leaders, which means that you don't have any voice locally at all unless you can realize that these people are be, have been put in there, parachuted in, and then you can do something about it and start fighting back against it. Because the template that they use is always the same. It never changes. And so, yeah, whether it's those still banging on about COVID or those gatekeeping the Palestinian side of the current events, they are all on board with the plan. Interesting thing. I'm going to give you some examples of that a little later on about how the gatekeeping of the Palestine side of the argument is completely and utterly controlled. They just give their audience a bit of what they think they want to hear. Uh, most of these platforms are Marxist orientated when you look at where their funding comes from. More on that later. Another article now that I think you'll find very interesting is the depopulation plan at windowsontheworld.net. We talked of Saul Alinsky's Rules for Radicals and much has been written about President Obama and Hillary Clinton's study and use of Alinsky strategies over the past 20 years for seizing power without concern for ethics or the harm that it causes. And what we are talking about here is Karl Marx's 10 planks to seize power also. So look up Saul Alinsky's Rules for Radicals, the 13 Rules for Radicals, and see if you can identify any of those being played out in your local area. But Karl Marx's 10 planks to seize power abolition of property in land and application of all rents of land to public purpose. We can see that these community groups are grabbing land, but they're not grabbing it for you, really, or the community. They're grabbing it for developers or they're grabbing it for community hubs or so-called community pubs. These places, of course, are hotbeds of change agents for infiltration and monitoring of what's going on. So, yes, that's the first one. The second is a heavy progression or graduated income tax, abolition of all rights of inheritance, confiscation of the property of all emigrants and rebels. Now, that's interesting because that's exactly what happened. So my friend could be seen as a rebel. She had a real community centre which served real people. That's not good enough. So these, um, heart, they, one of them was educated at Princeton and also Cambridge University. And there's two of these change agents came in, tried to start a revolution in North London, literally a revolution. We're talking about burning down buildings. We're talking about violence. The police were on their side. The police actually said through their community policing uh, network that uh, this lady should give the building to them because they were the community. I kid you not. So yes, confiscation of property of all emigrants and rebels. So once you're seen as a rebel, then they can go after your property. Centralisation of credit in the hands of the state by means of a national bank with state capital and an exclusive monopoly. At this point, I'd just like to talk about the article, the third world, the, the fourth world and the show we did, which is last in the Spreaker archive. And it's actually on our YouTube and Odyssey channels. One of the most important shows we've ever done. 
I'll get into that more after the break. I'm going to take a break soon. But centralization of the means of communication and transport in the hands of the state, extension of factories and instruments of production owned by the state, the bringing into cultivation of wastelands, and the improvement of the soil general in accordance with the common plan. Now, this was, of course, um, the early communism from 1948 onwards, the Karl Marx. And, of course, it was all done under the Workers' Revolutionary Party. And basically, that's how it stayed ever since. So these Marxist change agents, they grew out of things like the socialist worker, and now they're just called community organisers. So, yeah, equal liability of all to labour, establishment of industrial armies, especially for agriculture. Now, of course, we, we see that with the um, corporatization of agriculture through the UN and the destruction of farming. But equal liability to all to labour is basically the communitarian system of today. <laughs> so, yes, that's uh, basically gradual abolition of the distinction between town and country by a more equitable distribution of the population over the country. Well, what they're doing now, of course, under Agenda 2030 and 50, by 2050, they want everyone living in cities or two-thirds of the world population will be pushed into cities and the rest will be forced to leave where they are because the infrastructure will not exist in the country for them to live there. And they talk of free education for all children in public schools. Of course, that just means indoctrination from an earlier and earlier age to a later age because people now do not grow up. They never stop being indoctrinated. They go in these universities and, of course, they become change agents <laughs> as soon as they leave. Yes, so good examples of this are the Marxist uh, news network, Democracy Now!, and the gatekeepers of such obvious controlled opposition as Novara Media, who promote climate camp action, which was an intelligence services infiltration, a fake environmental group with a mix of real and fake activists with a core of what's known as dragons at its centre. Same structure as Extinction Rebellion, same actually as the Delphi meetings at your local council. So I'm going to take a little bit of a break. There's a lot of information here. And I think it's going to be quite a long show, but I think you're going to find it very useful. But mainly, it's about going back into the back catalogue. What we're doing now is delving into the catalogue at Windows on the World. And all of this stuff is not time sensitive. It's more relevant now than it ever was in the first place. So I'll be back in a couple of minutes.
That was Truth in a World of Lies from the Heretics of London, the Smithfield Martyrs, which you can still download from our website. And it is a stunning portrayal of the history of the Reformation in England and the acts which brought in laws, well, laws and acts and papal bulls which defined people as heretics. The whole history is in there and things are very similar now to how they were then. In other words, if you're not with them, then you're far right, you're a heretic and you will be ostracised. So, yeah, I just wanted to talk a little bit about a most important show and we did it as a live stream on YouTube and it will be also on our Odyssey channel. It didn't go on to Odyssey for some reason. I don't know why. They used to go straight on, but it didn't. So I'm going to upload it there. But in the meantime, you can find it in the archive on the Spreaker archive. Yes, where you'll find this show. It's the show before this in the archive. And it's one of the most important shows that is in the archive because we did a show years ago called The Man Who Saw the Future about George Hunt who went to the first World Wilderness Congress in 1987 and that's actually when a lot of this infiltration started. Of course after the Rio conference in 92 people were trained in this new communitarian system of sustainable development. It's all featured in that show in a very simple way and it's got this amazing video that George Hunt made and George Hunt died in 2013 and he was hoping that the fires of indignation would spread throughout the world. And of course, they haven't. Partly, this is due to the absolute ignorance of all media. All media out there is basically covering distraction. And that can't be emphasised enough at this particular point. The actual comments on there were great from people. They were saying what an important show it was, what important information and how clear it was, which is great because that means it works. But of course, it's dependent on the small group who get this stuff to actually circulate it and start putting it out there properly because we've been pretty much shut down. And the disgraceful way that the media now operates is of no help whatsoever because none of this stuff, this important stuff that you need to know, is being covered by anybody except this show. But, um, yeah, I'm going to be coming back to George Hunt and the Fourth World and the Wilderness of the Mind, because it's one of the things which is happening now. So let's get back to what we're going to talk about, because time is slipping away here, and we've been going half an hour and got a lot of information out, but there's so much more to go. So yeah, we talked before the break, we talked about how these groups are all the same. They have these change agents and this exterior, which is very regimented. And it's all, all of the causes are basically aligned with Agenda 2030. They're very Marxist, they're communitarian, and they support things like mass immigration. They support the breaking down of society. But of course, it all masquerades as a big happy clappy community where the narrative is controlled by the change agents, of course. But at the centre of these organisations, there's something very sinister. They all use the same tactic, by the way. They use people called dragons. It doesn't matter whether you're talking about what happened to Occupy St Paul's when that was taken over by change agents, or whether you're talking about Extinction Rebellion, or whether you're talking about any of these other groups. It'll be like Black Lives Matter. They all work the same. At the core, they have what they call dragons. And these people are there to attack anybody who gets too near the truth. So if you look at an article um, at windowsontheworld.net called Extinction Rebellion, The Facts, you will find links to a lot of other articles. But do just put in Extinction Rebellion and everything should come up because there's about half a dozen articles all about the inner workings of these groups and indeed what they are there for. But I'm just going to give you a quote now from Gail Bradbrook, who was one of the founders of Extinction Rebellion. Well, she said on a Sky News programme a couple of years ago that the politicians, this is the direct quote, the politicians behind the scenes, including this current government, are telling us they need a social movement like ours to give themselves the social permission to do the necessary. Just let that sink in, because when we look at the infiltration, we can see that the government has been funding and 
has been pushing these community groups since at least 2010. And that, of course, includes all of the climate change groups, such as Extinction Rebellion, such as Friends of the Earth, such as all these pressure groups, Just Stop Oil. They're all the same. At the centre of them, they will have what they call dragons who attack anybody. We actually have the emails on one of those articles about Extinction Rebellion from the dragons. And we'll get into that in a minute. But there's nothing very clever going on with these manipulators. They're just self-serving, not very intelligent. Of course, they don't have to be intelligent. But did you know, however, that there are millions of these types all working towards the goals of the globalists who have infiltrated every country on Earth? I've tried to give you a few examples there of different strands of it. But the dragons at Extinction Rebellion threatened a correspondent who dared to ask them about their connections and finances. Now, what the, the Extinction Rebellion thing was quite interesting because somebody in there left a lot of their stuff open publicly because he wasn't happy about what they were doing. So we found out all the people who'd got paid. A lot of the people who were on the payroll were people who'd been involved in, say, the fracking movement and Occupy. They went back quite a long way and they were on the payroll. So these people go from cause to cause but it's all the same cause of course it doesn't matter whether it's a it's a a climate change group or whether it's black lives matter or whether it's another kind of group it doesn't matter they're all the same they're all working towards the same end that's what people need to realize and basically this fellow who had it He was just asking questions. He was a bit gullible, actually, because he was just going about the corporate nature of Extinction Rebellion, not really that they were some kind of intelligence services group, which, of course, they are, and we've covered that many times. But he was threatened in emails by people who called themselves Foxtrot Tango and Foxtrot Echo. So, I mean, these people are so blatant, and their connections with the intelligence services are also so blatant They just don't really care. But it's all in our archive, and do have a look at that. You'll find it fascinating. They don't mind how obvious they are, these people. They are in global to local systems, and they are above the law. That's very important. They are above the law. So what does it say on the Extinction Rebellion website? Tell the truth. (laughs) Ironic, isn't it? Things are getting worse faster than we expected. Terribly constructed line there, but also absolute nonsense. Act now. Yes, because basically what they're talking about is actorvists. They're not really activists. This this is just kind of community theatre. It says those in power aren't acting quickly enough. Decide together. In other words, all this they're doing is they're trying to accelerate the plans of the globalists. It says we need change that is decided fairly and transparently. Well, of course, it's not because they use citizens' assemblies, which then became... um, citizens assemblies people's assemblies community assemblies and these are really used to steer everyone into the decided outcome the predetermined outcome through what's called delphi technique invented by the rand corporation in 1953 to steer corporate agendas basically if you've got a load of people in a corporation you want them all to think the same so you steer them through a route where you close doors and you give them more and more limited choices until they take the choice that you want. So so you get it to a point where there's very little opposition and then you close the door and everyone's voted. But of course they haven't really. It's just imposed on them from above. The results, of course, are that the rollout of, say, things like ULEZ and banning cars and the electric car fallacy are all being implemented much quicker through these groups. We need change, it says, That is decided fairly and transparently. We need a citizens' assembly on climate and ecological justice. And they got that, didn't they? They got the citizens' assembly in Oxford, which basically made sure that everyone in the UK has agreed. I don't know whether you know this, but you have agreed through the citizens' assembly on climate change in Oxford to retrofit your house starting at £25,000. And now that's just been announced and they're coming for your property. So this is no longer just these groups who are hiding in community hubs with their Marxist agendas, the gloves are really off. So yeah, the work we've done on citizens' assemblies blows them out of the water. Do look at that. Look at citizens' assemblies, end of choice. Citizens' assemblies, end of choice. Put it into the search bar at winsontheworld.net and you will find something very familiar to what you've probably seen locally if you're out there at all doing anything. So yes, it blows them out of the water 
as if it was even necessary though, to expose these shallow steering groups and their one choice and no choice agents. So yeah, go to Citizens Assembly's end of choice. The cowards in media go nowhere near this stuff. Why? As they are all communitarian in everything but name. They've collectivised themselves into little groups and they all grift off each other. We did a show called The Conspiracy Grifters and that outlined exactly what we're talking about here actually. So we did uh, a show called State Actors Lying for a Living and put that into the search bar. You'll find that interesting also. Um, And the facts of the matter are the only antidote to a stream of lies is basically to know how this stream of lies is being produced and react accordingly with truth which is backed up by absolute fact. And you need to have this really at your disposal and you need your group to be organised. So the insertion of half-truths to pacify those who consider themselves to be cynical of the party line makes this group of waverers easy to manipulate. The term limited hangout describes a gatekeeping organisation which absorbs the energy of those who may be questioning an official narrative but are still being manipulated. This type of operation is run by gatekeepers who maintain strict limitations on the topics debated and to introduce distraction issues. These types of groups also get the participants arguing amongst each other over issues of mainly no importance. This method has been very successful with gatekeeping and directing the 9-11 truth debate. I saw a lot of this. There were people brought in to divide and rule that from the start. And it's the same template as is going on in your local council. But over the years, I've seen these gatekeepers come and go. The main point here is that once you compromise something which is true and allow other points of view to come in and manipulate the outcome, which is in effect what happens to every group, but especially those which might have some effect, you have to really watch out for this. In this situation, you may as well be telling all lies, as any misinformation outside what is absolutely true poisons the well completely. So they don't need to infiltrate that much. All this they need is a couple of change agents in any group and they will destroy it And they will steer it into where they want it to go. And they will cause division or they will destroy the group completely. Whether it is those who spout a bit about common law and birth certificates and then miss the point entirely in court cases. Or those who just get on the bandwagon of a cause and somehow think that the state will allow what they are doing to continue without interference. These are all part of it. And I made that point in an address the other night to a group of people that this common law thing has been used. It's a state-backed infiltration program. Remember, they want the middle classes to give up their houses. How better to do it than to take the houses legally through the courts by people not paying things like council tax? There are ways around a lot of this stuff. We've gone into it over the years. But all of those clowns out there who masquerade under this term common law know nothing about common law or anything about how the system works. That's just a fact. These types have one thing in common. They always fail. And the biggest narcissists get listened to, don't they? And they actually appear to be gaining ground, of course. Then it all falls apart. There is an antidote to all this. And it is to work in groups of two or three people. And you can work collectively. But you stay under the radar. The idea that the public could now demand a real citizens' assembly is an idea which is unincorporated and has no leader. So, yes, that's just a point I made in this article, that your citizens' assembly should basically be like a secret society. In other words, the leader is hidden behind, say, 12 other members, as in the Rosicrucians. (laughs) Have a look at the Rosicrucian mystery at winsontheworld.net, and that's a concise way of how these secret societies or they're not secret, are they? If they were secret, you wouldn't have heard of them. They're made to be public, of course, because they have a public and a private face. Okay. Along with this, the appeal to authority as an argument no longer has standing in the eyes of the public, which makes the exposing of propaganda and lies in the manipulation of public opinion much more difficult. When most reiterated statements on behalf of the state have little or no standing, the truth can look so outlandish, the public cannot believe that truth because the lies are so audacious. I'm just reading here from a paragraph in that article all about uh, state actors lying for a living. And do have a look at it. 
It'll help you out a lot if you're interested in this subject. The professional liars or agents of change infest all public office. State actors lying for a living, indeed, even those who appear to oppose the state are the state, as we have so often discussed most recently in the case of the absurd and totalitarian Extinction Rebellion. I'm reading here from different articles. Take a look at Spies and Lies, UN Extinction Rebellion. Take a look at Extinction Rebellion, The Facts. You will find the most remarkable dot-joining information there because these organisations in their implementation are all the same. That's the message of tonight's show. So, the intelligence services throughout the UK, um, are basically there's the Research, Information and Communications Unit, RICU, and the Orwellian Institute of Strategic Dialogue. We examine them in those particular shows because the Institute of Strategic Dialogue is a full-on communitarian stroke Marxist propaganda outlet which basically calls everything far right and then blames a lot of stuff on Russia, of course, because they obviously have to keep it very simple. And despite the attempts to control all social media and internet narratives into the opinion corridor of the state, none of this is as effective as those involved in it like to think, and that's the point. The Templar NGOs linked to, inverted commas, protest, are in line with the aims of the UN Agenda 2030 goals, its taxation, restrictions and smart cities agenda, and of course everything globalist. The use of the word grassroots, of course, has been hijacked to mean state-controlled and agents of the UN, IMF and World Bank, who back all of these organisations. The bank the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development were behind a so-called women's march several years ago. And people didn't actually know why they were on it because what they did is they hijacked International Women's Day and put it on a different day and called it a women's march. There's so many of these that you probably are aware and have been overwhelmed by the sheer amount of them in the past. I'm going to give you a quote now from Demos, which is a public policy think tank and communitarian Marxist steering organisation. Just look up Jamie Bartlett. He was their spokesman. And this was from a document which came out years ago. And I think they may have removed this, but it was in my talk. It was one of the slides in my talk from several years ago. This is Demos. The new democracy will work with a combination of government open infiltration and citizens groups taking direct action. Demos admitted being in close contact with MI5 when we debated with them many years ago. Papers produced uh, by Demos, they parrot MI5 press releases and they put out many papers and we've covered them over the years, starting with things like the unreality of conspiracy theories, the echo chamber effect, etc. Just look up Carl Miller and Jamie Bartlett. They're still around, they're still pushing this, but I think that's one of the most telling quotes the new democracy will work with a combination of government open infiltration and citizens groups taking direct action. Explains everything. So we can look at another NGO here called the Climate Action Network. There's one everywhere, folks. You'll have one in your local area. Climate Action Network has a long and successful record, it says on its homepage, of steering climate policy advocacy and communications in various multilateral fora or forums. The network co-leads the Environment Non-Governmental Constituency, ENGO, in the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. So that's all in your local area, your local climate action network. It also coordinates, coordinates advocacy and communications as civil society observers in the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the IPCC. So these people are driving global policy through local initiatives, and it's all being infiltrated into your community or your so-called community. The Green Climate Fund, they're part of that. The G7 and the G20, they have seats there. 
the World Bank and International Monetary Fund meetings, this Climate Action Network go to those as well. And they have several, it says here, other diplomatic spaces. Can you see what these people are doing now? Can you see how big it is? It's not just a few local climate activists. They are lobbyists for the United Nations and the World Bank. Gatekeepers, yes, Novara Media, they've come up recently with their gatekeeping on Palestine. Uh, They're gatekeeping the Israel invasion into Palestine. And they actually advertised Climate Camp Scotland. Climate Camp were actually a police-led, undercover police-led group which actually spurred on Extinction Rebellion because they were born out of Climate Camp Action. Climate Camp Action embezzled all the funds from Occupy St. Paul's. We covered all that in shows such as the Bank of Ideas and the infiltration of the Bank of Ideas, which was a fake squat set up in Sun Street in the City of London. Who gets to squat in the City of London? Nobody. Um, Just look at all that. You can find that um, Inside Occupy and the Bank of Ideas, it's called Inside Occupy and the Bank of Ideas. You'll see Delphi Technique there. You'll see an undercover cop, Mark Weaver, who's actually facilitating the meeting. It's so blatant. It's a pantomime, but they got away with it and they're still doing it. They're doing it in your local area. The council meetings are exactly the same. They're running the same way. So on this Novara Media website, they say they are funded by donations from from their listeners. However, it states to fund specific projects. We also apply for grant funding from time to time from such bodies as the Rosa Luxemburg Foundation. Rosa Luxemburg was a radical revolutionary Marxist and was executed uh, when they tried to take over the German government. Do look up that. So when you look at how these people are funded, you realise what they are. So nothing out of the ordinary here, just Marxist communists, globalist stooges and controlled opposition with some useful idiots. So yes, that's uh, Novara Media. I just came across that today when I looked them up. Climate Camp is back and it's trying something new. No, it's not trying anything new. It's using the same template over and over again to control the narrative and push forward the Agenda 2030 goals through, yes, useful idiots. Um, and it, it, apparently this cl- Camp for Climate Action, it began in 2006 at Trax Power Station, Yorkshire. Climate Camp Action led into Extinction Rebellion and was used to bring down Occupy St. Paul's, stole its finances by funneling the Occupy St. Paul's money into its bank account. The insiders in these organisations are all well-funded state operatives. Yes, as I said earlier, we found the payroll and a lot of this was left public. Gail Bradbrook, Simon Bramler, Bramwell and Roger Hallam are co-founders of Extinction Rebellion, which started as Compassionate Revolution with George Bader in 2015. Yes, George Bader was the managing director of Compassionate Revolution, mentioned him many times. He's an agitator. He was involved in a thing called Democracy Village, which came out of climate camp action, the undercover police operation and MI5 operation to get peace protester Brian Hoare out of Parliament Square and stop protesting in public. So these protest groups are there to stop you protesting. How ironic is that? Yes, Have a look at another article called Globalist Fake Revolution. I mean, people who are interested in this will find so much information. That's why I'm doing this now, because the the information is going to be so useful to the people who need it. And so I'm never going to get on here and waffle and do a show which isn't 150 percent useful. And that's what was great about the comments on the fourth world when I put that out. That that show was so concise. I was very, very pleased with it. I was going to do a show about the fourth world, the, the George Hunt video. Just go and watch it. I'm not going to talk about it now, but um, it's the most shocking and interesting video you'll ever see if you know anything about this system they're bringing in. And this was from years ago. This was from 1987, the first World Wilderness Congress, up to the Rio Conference of 92. And we're a long way on now. But the template has remained the same. Yes. In response to requests for information about the Extinction Rebellion cult, one activist was threatened by agents of ER known as Foxtrot Echo and Foxtrot Tango. We mentioned that earlier, along with others in the cult. The founder of Extinction Rebellion, Gail Bradbrook, requested to be taken off the email list and did not apologise for the threats made against a member of the public. You see, this is how they know they will get away with it. These people are allowed. Now remember 
to break the law officially. Of course, undercover cops and MI5 have always broken the law. MI5 have been complicit in taking people out, of course. They're complicit in a lot of underhand infiltration. I've actually witnessed some of it, so I do know what I'm talking about there. But remember, these people have no moral code. The cult is facilitated by mainstream media, of course, the police and teachers who are encouraging children to join in with the indoctrination. The indoctrination which has no factual basis and no scientific evidence to back up any apocalyptic claims. That's Extinction Rebellion, Just Stop Oil and all the rest of these idiotic groups. Gail Bradbrook was in charge of programme development at Citizens Online where she worked as a digital inclusion strategy specialist. Now, this woman is a complete corporate parasite because what she's done, she's paid off her mortgage, she's had loads of consultancy money, consulting with a wide range of clients, it says here, EE, London Connects and the Cabinet Office. So she is basically an agent of the state who parades herself as a rebel. It's absolutely unbelievable. The front of these people, it's disgusting really because they are so audacious and they do not even care about the hypocrisy of how they present themselves. But yes, um, that's Citizens Online, which she was part of. She probably doesn't need to do that anymore. I actually approached citizensonline.org because when she left, I found out when she'd left, how long she'd been there. They actually told me. It's all history now. But the fake protest groups which followed the takeover of, say, Occupy... Uh, the Occupy movement formed other fake activist groups such as Reclaim the Power, all the same template yet again, and Climate Camp, of course. All money was drained from the Occupy finances by the state. These unimaginative intelligence-controlled groups use a carbon copy template employing change agents, trained facilitators, and repetitive sound bites. Whose streets? Our streets. And if you go to the article COVID protest social engineers you'll find out about an organization called Green and Black Cross who basically appoint you your lawyer if you've been arrested for activism and they are joined to these fake groups which are basically state operatives and things like climate camp action so everything is controlled and if you remember the protest groups of during Occupy you had um, Stand Up X that was right in with the change agents of Climate Camp Action through Green and Black Cross, which was on their website, exposed it all and the agents who took over the COVID protest narrative. I wasn't very popular after that with certain of the uh, conspiracy clowns out there because it actually blew their cover. And what also happened was a lot of the people who listened to the conspiracy circus hated it so much that they said, I don't listen to Windows anymore. Well, they didn't listen because they wanted to close their ears because everything I said was proved to be factually accurate. And indeed, it, it stands up more now than it did then because things have just moved on and got worse. So those who want to put their fingers in their ears are definitely not the people who listen to this show. And I was very encouraged by the comments on last week's and the last show in the archive, The Fourth World. The comments were absolutely fantastic and it's great to know that people out there do actually get it. Unfortunately, we're marginalised. So please do support us because I put all this material out solely on my own, including the films and videos and everything in the archive. And just a little bit of support would help. All you have to do is go to the homepage, chuck us a fiver a month or something. It just helps to pay for everything because I don't know how much longer I can keep going doing this because I'm putting everything into it and basically we get nothing back. We get, I'm very thankful for the few quid that does come through, but it, do, it doesn't pay for everything. That's the point. So that's something to think about because we are the most marginalised show in, in the alternative media. Ask yourself why that is. Ask yourself why the grifters never mention windows on the world or never want to have me on their shows and many have been asked by the way there was a blanket of silence you could say a conspiracy of silence around the uk fake alternative media towards this show rant over i didn't really rant then did i <laughs> i was quite polite i thought <laughs> yes so yes these fake protest groups, they identify opposition through their dragons, which we've mentioned, and remove anyone who sees through their state-backed subversion. Occupy St. Paul's even had this Orwellian clockwork orange type 
group called the Tranquility Team who came to sort out anybody who might have gone against the narrative or might be railing against their sound bites like whose streets, our streets and of course the Green and Black Cross Climate Camp Action Mantra this is what democracy looks like. I'm not, I kid you not. Saskia Kent at St. Paul's, the, church, the train change agent who came in to destroy it, was shouting, this is what democracy looks like when Occupy St. Paul's had been taken down to 12 radical Marxists and a dog. Oh, and three of us who were haranguing them and had people shouting in our faces, pointing at us going, no threat, no threat, no threat, shouting in our faces. Absolutely unbelievable stuff, but it gets much worse than that. It goes into real violence, it goes into law breaking, it goes through theft of property, it goes into death threats, it goes into basically lawlessness, and that's what they want, of course. That's what they call their revolution. Well, even state activist Phoenix Rainbow was on the payroll for Extinction Rebellion, as he's been on the payroll for many of these other fake protest groups, and he's still around, and people still think he's some kind of squatter. And some kind of freedom fighter. Unbelievable. So the structure of, say, Extinction Rebellion mirrors the George Soros back takeover of Occupy with its command structure, including, of course, the dragons who threaten and intimidate anyone who asks questions. And yes, we have got the emails from the so called dragons on those articles. You'll find it in one of those articles put in Extinction Rebellion. You'll find that very, very useful. So we also looked at the organisations linked to Extinction Rebellion and how these are uh, basically in the hundreds and globally thousands of these NGO template organisations, all using the same narratives, all backed by the big financial interests which are pushing the climate change agenda for profit and ultimately control of the world population and, of course, its natural resources which they want to steal, and they have done. The change agents, social entrepreneurs, psychological nudging, the Saul Alinsky rules which all appeared as part of David Cameron's big society. Yes, folks, it goes back to 2010. And before, of course, with the Blair years, that's when it really started to come in. New Labour. Gail Bradbrook, it says in this article, is one of the founders of Extinction Rebellion, along with Roger Hallam and George Barder. Their company is Compassionate Revolution Limited, and the Extinction Rebellion protest came through Rising Up, an organisation linked to other template-type NGOs which claim to be grassroots. Interesting. So back to the community activists. And we can look at, say, regenerate.org. There's hundreds, there's hundreds of these, by the way. Once you start looking, you'll be amazed how many are there and how um, you'll be amazed at how many are in your local area. It says here, the Good Jobs Project is committed to transforming the way businesses approach recruitment. Basically, these people are into everything. They're making them go into their fake diversity, which means that they are funneling people into organisations through their trained change agent networks. That's what it means. They're controlling the narrative even through the employment sector. It says unlocking the full potential of purpose-driven models by embracing inclusivity. Well, there's nothing more exclusive and discriminating than inclusivity. Of course, that's the Marxist agenda. And intentionally targeting marginalised groups It says, we can bridge the gap between labour shortages and individuals seeking meaningful employment, meaning putting their people in and keeping anyone else out. They do this to small businesses. They do this to medium-sized businesses. These people are into everything. Together, it says, we can build a future where everyone has access to good jobs and businesses thrive. What BS? Businesses will not thrive. The only businesses that will thrive are those funded and those which support the ongoing agenda. And Citizens UK is another one, citizensuk.org. We've talked about these for about 15 years, and they have chapters all over London and the rest of the country. It says they're bringing communities together to win change. They're going to win change. It says we are the UK's biggest, most diverse, and most effective people-powered alliance. We're working together to make change on the issues that matter. From campaigning for zebra crossings, they always have to put in these very small local things. Like they'll get involved in like local arts groups, local community groups, but that's just the cover for the subversion that they're bringing in, um, basically. And then it gets onto the crux of the matter to reforming the immigration system, which means mass immigration and basically the destabilisation of society. That's what they mean. 
So basically, yes, you've got a whole list of these people developing local leaders and driving nation nationwide change. And that's citizensuk.org. They've been around for a long time. Community organisers is another one, of course. It says on the Citizens UK website, we know everyday people have the ability to shape the world around them. Together we put the power back into people's hands to hold those responsible to account by bringing people together across their differences. In other words, by controlling the narrative through their consensus building and Delphi technique. It says to find common ground and win change. Winning! <laughs> we build positive working relationships between communities. Elected power holders and businesses making sure everyone is heard and no one is left out. What a load of BS. It means that everyone is seen to be heard. Very, very different. And anyone who is able to see through their garbage is definitely left out. It says we work with hundreds of civil society organisations who we call our members, schools, universities, faith groups, charities, unions and more to help them make change in their communities. Citizens UK talked about this Marxist steering group since it started. We've been going on about them for a long time. Citizens UK is made up, it says, of hundreds of member organisations. It's a network of spiders web. There's even a, a thing called social spider that appeared in Waltham Forest with these Marxists who came out of a dormant group, a dormant company, which was like this radical Marxist group. It sprung into action. There was a community hub, a community newspaper, and this social spider network. Look it up. It's extremely creepy. But yes, Citizens UK is made up of hundreds of member organisations that are committed to taking action together for, wait for it, social justice and the common good communitarian words there social justice meaning enforcing everything up to the noahide laws both locally and nationally and the common good just means that everyone agrees with the ongoing agenda of the 2030 goals the un agenda 2030 goals and we've already proved tonight of course how the un are completely part of these groups and their steering system all are pro they're all pro massive immigration and empowering their chosen fake minorities which don't exist of course training them as future useful idiots so what they're doing is basically racist they find people from what they call different ethnic diversities they train them to be useful idiots and these people then are said to speak on behalf of their so-called communities which of course they don't they don't speak on behalf of their communities. They're traitors to their own communities and their own people. So, yes, they actually are involved in things like communities for Ukraine, climate justice, the citizens' agenda, welcoming, welcoming refugees and a fair pathway to citizenship, sponsor refugees. See, this is all the Cooled and Hoke Lurgy plan. Oh, is that a, 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 a conspiracy theory? No, it's what they're all up to. Parents and communities together, packed, <laughs> you'll never guess, make misogyny a hate crime. In other words, you can't criticise their radical feminist change agents or you're misogynistic. Migrant communities, a pathway to citizenship. You see, the ten planks of the Communist Manifesto are present underneath the word salad and blatant discrimination and agenda-pushing Marxism of all these groups. They've infiltrated global to local and these revolutionaries are everywhere no matter where you are. So why are more people not talking about it? Ask yourself that. Why is the so-called alternative media not telling you what you need to know? This show is telling you what you need to know, not what you think you want to know or what they think you want to know. Because we've split off from pretty much everything now, which is much better. And I think the people who listen to these shows can actually affect change. Otherwise, I wouldn't be doing these sort of shows. There'd be no point. But I know that they can. I know that people out there can ignite the fires of indignation against these change agents, against these infiltrators, and really take back some of their own power. But it takes effort. Locking those out who do not fit their diversity remit is what it's all about. It's all controlled. And those who know 
need to talk about it. In fact, they need to organize and act against it. In fact, using their rules against them. Hold them strictly to their own rules, as Saul Alinsky himself said. Hold them strictly to their own rules and their own laws. And make an example of any of them that do not do that. This takes campaigns. It takes online activate, real activism. Uh, but it can be fun as well. And there's nothing more satisfying than deflating a change agent. It is one of the most satisfying things. Because when all the bluster and the bullshit has stopped. And they're stripped of everything. And they have nothing to say. That means you really have won. So I hope that was useful. Do look at those articles and check out the last show in the archive, The Fourth World. That will be also a revelation if you have not heard that material before. Thank you and good night. Updating last week's show, The Community Revolutionaries. Now, this is is really interesting stuff, and I was going to read something out before I get into that, actually. The institutions of learning and the academic world are now the main mechanism for the destruction of knowledge and, of course, infiltration, the global agenda for the dumbing down of all. This reversal of the natural order is degenerating the end time scenario where the hosts have willingly absorbed the parasite And that's what's happened in Britain. And it's happening all around the world. The historical shows we do have an absolute purpose to clarify and make sure that at least a few will have the power to carry on with what is necessary and dutifully avoid the endless distractions and subversion which is imposed upon what are the willing hosts of reversal of truth. And those too distracted or shallow and indoctrinated will only have themselves to blame. The fork in the road was a long time ago, and the choice is there for those with the wisdom and insight to take it. Now, that actually goes into replying to that last comment about the Middle East, and also what we're going to be talking about next. So, Basically, I'm going to give you an update on last week's show and one of thousands of examples of what we were talking about in that show. We talked of Citizens UK and their Saul Alinsky agitation as social justice for collectivising people. And this is a paper that was produced um, through Citizens UK by the East London Communities Organisation. And it's called the Alinsky Method of Participation and Social Change. And basically, they talk about how it bases its approach to community cohesion and empowerment on the methods developed by Saul Alinsky, um, an activist working in Chicago, USA, in the 1960s. Telco, this East, the East London Communities Organization, is an independent community organization, is it? No, it isn't. <laughs> Through which citizens can challenge powerful political and economic institutions. No, they can't. It's just gatekeeping, like Big Brother watches gatekeeping. Like these promoted organisations are always for gatekeeping. There's gatekeeping of just about everything. It says well, they're going to require powerful political economic institutions to listen and respond to the concerns of ordinary people who are mobilised and working together, yes, being collectivised into a cause as revolutionaries. This is the point. As protesters, not as people lobbying for their rights, remember, protest is completely different. Protest is where you are organised into a cause. Very different. The last protest in the UK were the poll tax riots, which was the nearest thing Britain has come to the Peasants' Revolt ever since. And of course, there was a massive clamp down after that, but it worked because it started out as a very peaceful movement, that. And yes, it was used in the end, as they all are, to shut everything down, and they used it to clamp down with more police powers, etc. But what they're saying here is this foundation, they work with a wide range of civil society groups to come together around common concerns, manufactured ones, of course, and to campaign for the C word. Yes, change. The foundation seeks to strengthen the capacity of civil society. It means collectivise everything into a communitarian hub, basically. 
to strengthen the capacity of civil society as an independent force for change by bringing together, wait for it, you'll never guess, diverse communities, useful idiots, around common issues, developing leadership within existing community organisations, training future leaders. Now, wait a minute, let's just take a rain check here for a minute. A leader is usually someone with vast life experience and great personal integrity. A leader is not some idiot who's done a BS course on diversity or the whole system of Marxism which they use as divide and rule and then they go out and get a job with an NGO and start lobbying for something they know F all about and sit in an office all day, get paid loads of money and basically do nothing but subvert the narrative of what people think is community. That's not a leader. A leader is someone who can get a lot of people together, get them to work together for a definite aim. It's not someone who repeats a load of BS that they've been told. That's not a leader. So let's get this straight when they're talking about leaders. They're not talking about leaders. They're talking about useful idiots. And we, t- and we gave you the definition of useful idiots in last week's show. They're usually completely unaware of the malign intentions of what they are working for. Some of them are, of course, completely aware. But it says developing leadership within existing community organisations, gatekeeping everything, of course, and enabling them to confront powerful decision makers. No, getting them to lobby for the things which are part of the new system. That's all it is. And also to create alliances, it says, to achieve positive change. Is that like positive law, communitarian law? This method is based on the work of Saul Alinsky, who developed the concept of broad-based community organising in the 1960s in Chicago and went on to establish the Industrial Areas Foundation, the American forerunner of the COF. The Alinsky method for social change is based on building a strong, independent organisation that has very clear and specific goals. So, in other words, what you have to do to fight back against this is do exactly the same thing. Build a strong, independent organisation that has very clear and specific goals, but is ready to change and basically manoeuvre within what the enemy are doing. Very important. So, one of Alinsky's fundamental rules was never to do for other people what they can do for themselves. Wow, I wish more people would actually take that on. It's actually not a bad idea. However, when people talk of targeted individuals, they should mention Alinsky as his rule of agitating and relentlessly attacking a target to destabilise it and destroy any reaction against you is basically the work of the revolutionary, and it's used all the time. The real targeted individuals are those being singled out by the change agents, the revolutionary Marxists, the communitarians. However, once you know the rules for radicals, none of it is very scary, as it's utterly predictable. How do I know? It's been used on me. It's been used to the point where I have had um, even members of my family targeted. And this goes back to an article you can look at. I brought it up, I think, last week called Small Venues and Charities Under Threat. And that has the whole story in. So updating from last week, there's this been huge, there's this huge distraction on this organisation called Common Purpose, which is a tiny finishing school for change agents. They're already change agents before they go there. That's a distraction. And it's worked very successfully because when you talk about this Saul Alinsky method, people talk about them not the thousands of NGOs which are now infiltrating your council and taking over the narrative of all public participation. Well, as Alinsky said, the fear of something is worse than the thing itself. So get rid of the fear, because these people have no real power. The empty threats may well turn nasty, but the rules never deviate. Anything which runs by these types of rules is in the end predictable because they're all working to the same template. So when people ask me for a template, I said, no, you understand what you're doing and then you can create many templates because templates always have to be subtly different. Otherwise, once it becomes a template, they just said, oh, they got that off the internet. (laughs) That's what they do, isn't it? 
And as, be, as, been, as has been, of course, the tradition of late, we are following on from that last show. So just a few more information bites before we get into the meat and potatoes. The globalists to localists want the permanent revolution. They want the protest movement. They want collective rights over the rights of the individual. They want the consensus reality. They want the science, which is not science by definition. And the arrival at a a conclusion through factual observation is now just for the common good. No facts necessary. In other words, science isn't something that's proved by a series of facts. Science is basically repeated and imposed on people as though it's true when it isn't. How many shows have we done on the subject of how the system works? Plenty, very many, because no other media talks about the system or the solution. And until the basics are grasped, of course, there is only distraction and permanent arrested development. And some people, they've said, oh, I talk about communitarianism all the time. One or two have said this, right? And said, well, I don't. I talk about it in about in every one out of six shows, really. But without understanding what communitarianism and the system is, you can't participate in anything. So, so when they try and isolate it as something that's separate from other things, it's not. It's infiltrated everything. So you can't talk about anything without talking about this. You can't. There's no way you can. Because if you don't understand this, you don't understand the system and you never will. That's why I say these are not my opinions. This is their system I'm telling you about after all this study. Why is no one else talking about it is why we do these shows. And why is no one talking about it is something you need to ask yourself when you're listening to so-called alternative broadcasters, the freedom fighters, why aren't they talking about this? Because this is how it actually works. And this is how you can have success. And the centralization of power has been the ultimate goal. Centralizing what is perceived as decentralized power is now the decoy. Now, I made that note earlier. So the centralization of power is talked about But centralizing what is perceived as decentralized power is the decoy. In other words, we are looking at uh, a broken up system. It appears broken up, but it's all joined together with one aim. So in other words, it's, it's decentralized and unstructured in the eyes of the public. It's unstructured in the eyes of the public, but it's highly structured. It's overstructured. And that's their fatal weakness. And now we get on to devolution which is what is coming, what we are in. Devolution means the power is now where we always said it was locally. This is massive and the scale of it is beyond anything the general public could possibly imagine. It's not been seen by them, but it's not hidden. Devolution is degeneration into the new system. Your local council will not want you talking about devolution as it is the degeneration of everything that the public believes the system is. Well, did you know, for instance, the councils are going to essentially take over from the inland revenue with a localised tax system? This is what this devolution is all about. And it's happening. It's not just these unitary councils, these conglomerations of councils. It's way beyond that now. They're talking about devolving parliament into these local authorities. So in other words, you will have no recourse after the 24th of March next year. So it is time to start thinking about it if you haven't thought about it so far. No, you have, dear listener. But it's, a, it's time to try and get some of those people who are wasting their time by becoming pro- protesters, freedom fighters, board carriers, to actually get on board and start attacking properly. And we're going to tell you how to do that again over the next few weeks. We covered how to take down the LTNs, and that's, that's gone down pretty well. But focusing just on that is missing the bigger picture because you have to attack them on multiple levels, Saul Alinsky style, to destabilize them. You have to pick up on everything. Why was that tree chopped down? Why have you let developers put that building project there? All of this stuff, we never voted to have these flats here um, go back into the localism act because it does give you these rights it takes away a lot of course to collectivize you but it's still written in their own rules okay so ngos fronted by trained globalist puppets are making the decisions which run your life did you know that that's true 
that corporate stakeholders are the controllers of what happens on your doorstep, that Saul Alinsky Rules for Radicals is the template for community organising in Britain and across Europe uh, to a greater or lesser degree depending on the country, that your council uses these rules against you and also states, uh, they also state that use, using the rules uh, will trap you into their causes. I mean, all this stuff is written down. This is what the Saul Alinsky agents do all the time. We've been covering it for 15 years and it's all in the archive. But Alinsky pioneered community organising. Get back to what they say it is. A form of coalition building centred on aligning the common goals of multiple interest groups. Too small or electorally weak to combine command a legislative majority. Hence you get Black Lives Matter. Hence you get trans rights. Hence you get none of this is about rights, by the way. And most people with a brain can actually work that out. This is about creating biological weapons to cause the endless revolution, the endless distraction which comes from the revolution. So this is exactly how the councils exert control through NGOs and stakeholders by forming a coalition aligning the common goals of multiple interest groups, basically funneling people into the intended outcome. They bring in the UN Agenda 2030 goals as if it is the public that is lobbying for them. Remember, the Citizens' Assembly on Climate Change, we talked about all that in the last show, we've talked about it. Just, just look up Citizens' Assembly's end of choice. I always give you lots of references in these shows because all the information's there. And basically, you've all agreed to have your houses um, retrofitted beginning at 25 grand. They've now told you that. The councils are telling you that. So this is, this is where they're going to lend you money, put a lien on your house or take it. And it's not going to get any better. It's only going to get worse from now on. So remember that Alinsky also invented the tactic of using shareholder activism to pressure publicly held companies into adopting social justice policies. Well, this is how the World Bank and the local councils also do it. The smokescreen of social justice and social equity is merely gaslighting all the corporations and public into their totalitarian control system. All for the common good. Well, the common good of the World Bank and its fake green looting operation, and of course the millions of NGOs and their parasite employees. The future leaders that we talked about. They're all being trained, trained with these useless degrees. They couldn't do anything. They couldn't go out there and do anything, but they confront NGOs and write useless reports and lobby the council to lobby the government. This is what your council tax is paying for, and there is not a better description of where it goes as describing it as a black hole, because you'll never find out where it went. I'm looking at now... I'm going to have a, another quick break, actually, because... I need a little drink of water. So I'm going to have a bit of a break, another two-minute break. Well, I've been going 50 minutes already. Well, it's going to be very informational, this show, so stay tuned, dear listener. Ah, oh, welcome back. Just needed to get a little drink there because there's been a change in the weather. I think you've probably noticed it too. But here the weather is still very temperate for this time of year. Climate change can be a good thing, can't it? Did you know that there's going to be an absolute doubling of the rollout or even trebling of facial recognition? You know, facial recognition, the facial recognition, which was tried out at football matches and was found to be 96% inaccurate. 
Well, they're bringing it back on the basis that they've found a couple of criminals through it. Well, actually, on the law of averages, if you just stopped a few people in the street, you'd probably find a few of them that might be wanted for something. Absolutely pathetic, but it's a sign of things to come, you see. This is where the global to local agenda really comes in. It's your council who's going to be setting up those cameras soon. So, this is from localpartnerships.gov.uk. It's titled Climate into Corporate... And it's from the 24th of October this year, a few days ago, in fact. Councils must embed, must embed climate into corporate and service risk management. Councils must embed climate into corporate and service risk management. Share this with your colleagues. Help is at hand for local authorities on their strategic response to long-term climate adaption. Remember, the mitigation is where they're making the money rolling out these so-called green technologies which we know aren't green that's called mitigation because there's no proof for the climate scam well no real proof there's manufactured proof of course so the adaptation is all about the mitigation it says the strategic response to long-term adaption needs to accelerate to ensure councils can continue to serve communities and shape our places effectively. The forthcoming Met Office Local Authority Climate Service will provide accessible data to use for scenario planning. Can you see how it's global to local? There was always these local action groups and these local websites which had everything about the United Nations on. If you go back to big society change agents, look at that, scroll down, you'll find a link to your local website. Every town and, and Every town and city in Britain's got one. And it's all linked in to the UN and this controlling of the data. It says, in conjunction with the toolkit, this supports councils to identify those critical thresholds across service areas and statutory functions and the opportunities and co-benefits for communities that many adaptive measures will deliver for local place shaping and resilience. Meaning, of course, surveillance and the Internet of Things, new technology, etc. Climate change does require a long-term strategic approach. Councils must embed climate into corporate and service risk management as a given, with all directorates looking at how services should be designed for future impacts. It says we are experiencing them now and they will become more frequent and more intense within the time frames. Many councils have set themselves for reaching net zero. Remember, 70% of councils in the UK have declared a climate emergency. Well, that tells you what sort of idiots you're dealing with for a start, doesn't it? OK, many councils have set themselves for reaching net zero. What does that mean to you, the, the, payer, of the, the payer of their wages? Ask yourself what that means to you. It says we are responding to the acute risks. They're not responding to what's actually happening. They're responding to what they are saying might happen, which most of us know never will. The strategic response to long-term adaption needs to accelerate to ensure councils can continue to serve communities and shape our places effectively. So... Everything that you're paying for has to be included in this mitigation process. The biggest scam run by the biggest scammers of all time. And this is exactly how the UN system, through the World Bank and the climate liars and its power structure, well, of course, including how this mitigation model works, or in reality, of course, doesn't work, except for the parasites who make money out of it and ruin everybody else. It works for those who are exploiting the billions who think they are trying to get on target to save the world. Remember, we talked about the Global Environmental Facility since 1987, when it was actually officially incorporated in 91, has been bankrupting third world countries, giving them massive debt. It's all in the fourth world. Actually, if you haven't, if you haven't watched it on Odyssey, please do. The fourth world was a live stream. I did one of the most important things we've ever done, because it's the most important video that was ever produced about Agenda 2030 to those who actually have an inkling of how this works. It was a fellow called George Hunt. We've done a lot on him. Look at the man who saw the future, winnersontheworld.net. But look at the fourth world. It's on the homepage at winnersontheworld.net. But it went to Odyssey very slowly. So it's only had about 40 or 50 hits. So 
the, the most important video we've ever put out there got delayed before it was put onto Odyssey and it's fallen behind another two now because uh, of the time. So yeah, do have a look at that if you haven't anyway. But yeah, the Financial Stability Board's Climate Related Disclosure Fund operates through risk assessment based on commute, computer models and flat out lies. So not only have you got these NGOs who are working towards this net zero garbage, you've got the Climate Related Disclosures Fund out of the City of London that forces all the major corporations to be on board too because the money is in mitigation. That's how they're making the money, forcing so-called third world countries to take out massive loans on fake green implementations which are made to fail so that they, the creditor wins, the debtor loses. The creditor wins. Very, very simple. Yeah, see the fourth world and the man who saw the future. And the man who saw the future, the article, has got the Rothschild City of London carbon trading scheme before it was even launched. And the City of London is the centre of it all under the World Bank, of course. So risk assessment is based on made-up propaganda. Do Lloyds of London know that the climate crisis is a scam? Yes, they do, of course. But they're all on board as this new system has been imposed upon everybody and all can benefit from the public loss of everything. That's what this is about, because they can exert more control through the climate regulations. Ultimately, that's what corporations are doing. As we said, the globalists need the anti-globalists to implement their policies. So template protest groups are formed, all back to community organising. Protest against 5G, but not the system it is used for. Agenda 2030, go for the monkey, but not the organ grinder. That's what it's all about. Protest against anything, but never go to the source of power. This is the way all protest groups in the UK are steered and other countries as well, as all protest is either controlled or fully infiltrated and then controlled. The useful are ousted by useful idiots, as in the case of the Covid protests. See Covid protest social engineers. I always give sources and I always give really strong references to everything we say in the shows. I will continue to do that. So the illusion of choice is all that is there. The test of the time is whether people understand what they are being told or whether they listen to it. In the coming weeks, we're going to put out some simple steps and solutions once again. But remember, your local area is unique, but the template of implementation is the same. One choice, no choice all under the banner of community. So target local issues and be relentless when you uncover their hypocrisy. As it says in the Protocols of World Power, our hypocrisy will be relentless and consistent. Consistent hypocrisy is the only thing they have that is consistent. Fake green policies and their implementation which go against the preservation of natural habitats, for instance. Their hypocrisy is the only consistent thing they have. And it's all from the protocols of world revolution and the communitarian Marxist system. Communitarian stroke Marxist system. So here's what you can do. Because I've been working with Madeline Hunt on the idea of putting out some simple solutions. And she sent this out in an email today and copied me in and I thought it was very good so I'm going to share it with you so you get another view here's what you can do if you live in London search for local communities that are expressing concerns about any council plans whether it's related to LTNs schools taxing housing or immigration anything two prepare a brief document stating that you and a group of local residents <clears throat> will be calling for a local referendum, followed by a by-election to replace the current council establishment under the Localism Act of 2011. Three, find out how many signatures are required to call for a local referendum. It varies in different places, OK? Just look it up, you'll find out. This information, it should be information on your local council's website. Typically, it's 5% of the local population for district and parish councils. So, what are you waiting for? Number four, collect the signatures. The best approach is to approach local businesses, business owners, shops, cafes, hairdressers, etc. And ask if they would be willing to keep a list in their premises 
and encourage people to sign it. You'll find that small businesses will help you. They are absolutely fed up with what these councils are doing. Go to the small businesses. They're the ones who are being destroyed. Your high street will be empty apart from community hubs within five years. Or the stakeholders and the big corporations will be in there, which is exactly what's been planned. Remember, these people, these future leaders, these trained useful idiots are entirely corrupt. It was proved in Haringey. Claire Coba had to resign as the leader of the council. And that was because Lend-Lease were given 52% of Haringey. It was all turned over in the High Court. So, in the words of Malcolm, Yes, you can be winning! But really winning. Five. Approach local residents whenever possible. Start with a simple question. Are you satisfied with the council? What changes would you like to see? Six. Collect signatures. Once you've gathered the required number of signatures, please get back to us, info at windowsontheworld.net. Get on our Discord group, get in a conversation, and we'll take it from there. So, that was succinctly put by Madeline Hunt, who you will know has been on quite a few shows when we're talking about the solution. Because between the two of us, we've actually put out shows which are more than informative. They are a template of how this works. I've been describing that template for 15 years. Sometimes it's good to have somebody who's already lived through the same thing in communist country to give you their perspective and prove that what I'm talking about is happening and has been happening for a long time. Yes, this is what most of the shows on this subject have been about, I know, and I've said so much on the subject It's good to have another voice on the global to local devolution and levelling up. We're going through massive changes in our system, which is the third level of devolution. Devolution refers to degeneration and gradual decomposition. Look it up. Of course, it's the opposite of evolution, which is, of course, another myth. But we can evolve mentally. But we are being devolved through communitarianism, which is arrested development. One aspect of the devolution system is the levelling up programme, which aims to bring about progress not only nationally, but also globally. To fully understand this concept, it may be a good idea to read the Communist Manifesto, Trotsky's Permanent Revolution Plan and Stalin's Five-Year Plan. These manifestos have devolution and the levelling up agenda included, and they're practically a copy of these documents. The sustainable development plans and the plans of your local council are practically the same. So this is the same template that has been used throughout history to control humanity and establish a one world government that controls the entire earth. Leveling up does not only mean promoting privileged, in inverted commas, minorities, but also suppressing intelligence and erasing cultural and historical differences. Its goal is to keep humanity in arrested development. All going through Parliament, of course, at the moment, along with the online harms bill, which has already gone through, to suppress all alternative voices. And that's going to be a problem. What we can do now is to get properly organised and stop wasting time on futile, inverted commas, heroic actions. And instead, face the reality of the situation. We only have a remember until March 2024 to gather signatures and demand local referendums and by-elections. After that, it will be practically impossible, although there will be no central government to to support our complaints about the councils. The councils will become the governing bodies and our democracy is already fragile. We must utilise it now or we may not have another opportunity for decades or even longer. So, in order to collect people's signatures, we need to find a common issue that will interest them. There are different issues that local residents are worried about, and that will be the starting point to gather people together. Under the Localism Act 2011, we still have the right to demand referendums and by-elections. Another important thing is that we must become involved in politics. The communist system brainwashed people to keep them away from politics. The moment we stop voting and supporting decent political parties, we automatically have no influence to change or control the politics and politicians. Whatever you think of that, it's actually true. 
To replace the councils, we need candidates. Even if people don't want to join any party, a business person, shop owner or cafe owner would be more capable of running the local economy than the authorities we currently have. Of course they would. Lastly, the Heritage Party is built from normal average people. They don't have sponsors or stakeholders like other parties do, and we are the only party standing against the whole agenda, says Madeline Hunt, who's the secretary, local secretary, I think, for the uh, Heritage Party. Now, I only watch David Curtin's videos. He's the only politician in this country saying anything of use, and he goes along with what we're saying, and that is because it's happening and no one else is talking about it. So it doesn't matter what you think of a party. You have to get behind something because that gives you more leverage. And in fact, David Curtin, it carries on, stood against the agenda in the London Assembly. He's been doing it for years before people even knew that the agenda existed. He has, actually. And everything he's come out with over the past year, I've been really pleased that somebody else is talking about this stuff. Because it's not just me. There's somebody else doing it. So people who really want to fight the globalists should join that party, says Madeleine Hunt. I agree. I absolutely agree with that, and I fully, 100% support it. Political status gives us extra power to act on a level that a citizen's movement simply cannot achieve. Because, of course, we've talked about citizen's movements. That's what the last two shows have been about. That's what lots of shows in the archives have been out. The infiltration, control, steering and management of citizens' groups. As we've pointed out time and time again, it is not only the infiltrated but steered and controlled groups. It's you. Remember, the revolutionary spirit is taken account of. The revolutionary spirit is then harnessed and steered. So, continuing. We have already corresponded with several government departments informing them about our activities, says Madeline. Once we obtain the required number of signatures, we will request the Secretary of State to grant us permission to vote for a new administrative system in our areas. To achieve complete success, we must continue to do the same, as the listeners to the show are not interested in arrested development. All of this is still essential information. And when I look at what's happening and go back into the archive, yes, we have to repeat some of these things, because unless people get in with the way the system works and how they're being governed, they will never have any effect with what they're doing. And we can see that from every controlled opposition movement from the past several years. So I'm going to conclude now. It's been a very long show, hasn't it? But do think about supporting the show and keep in touch with info through the website, info at windowsontheworld.net. I couldn't do this without the listeners. So do help us out. And this show is all about trust. The stuff I put out is absolutely from factual analysis with 100% integrity. And we're going to do a new show on solutions to consolidate things such as how to oppose LTNs, which had a lot of success out there, and a lot more with this levelling up and devolution. It will be forthcoming in the next few weeks so thanks for listening everybody hope it wasn't too heavy in fact i hope you enjoyed it see you all soon on windowsontheworld.net do take a look at our latest show with jerry marzinski and our special guest and that is on odyssey and our youtube channel please subscribe to us on odyssey and spreaker because we've had most of our stuff taken off youtube a lot of important stuff anyway so thanks for listening and good night everybody thanks for your support